So um, this paper mainly focuses on the added worker effect. Um, so when a, a partner in a, in a couple loses loses his or her job, then, then often the, the other partner steps in and, and increases either the number of hours worked through the extensive margin, so starting to participate or to, to increase the number of hours worked, for example, from 80% from to, to what, 100%. Um, so actually the added worker effect is, is one of the many smoothing mechanisms that, that, that can happen in, inside households. So when you think about a, a standard life cycle model, so household smooth consumption or, or utility over time. So they are subject to, to a different series of, of shocks. And so they, they try to take this into account. So um, the important thing, so and the added worker effect is, is something well documented. The important thing here that the authors do is that they also take into account, and, and that's, that's very novel, the, the fear of losing the job. And then that they don't, that the, that households are not waiting until the, a shock really occurs, but if the, the probability of a shock increases, that they already try to adapt behavior. And so what they nicely do is to document that, that indeed these, these, uh, that, that preemptive strike, let's say, already happens in, in many households. Um, so the, the data that they use are really cool. I mean, literally they have, a, in the, the best case, 3.6 million of observations. I mean. I have a paper published in, in a good journal with 212 observations, so this is really cool for me. Uh, on the other hand, we are in a macro setting, so many of you are used to dealing with uh, small numbers of observations. Um, but so it's also cool because the, the, there's a, it's 16 different countries involved, so which allows to, to do a quite, quite decent analysis. Um, so, and as Celine showed, the, the effects are sizable, both in terms of the added worker effect, as well as uh, starting to, to participate when, when um, a shock might occur. Um, so, of course, I have to give comments and, and some criticisms, perhaps. One thing, but this is, of course, beyond the control of the authors, is that the, the panel is very short. So, uh, it's basically the panel that I mentioned is two consecutive quarters, so three months. That's not that much given if you think about, a, so a shock needs to occur or the fear of a shock. And within three months, the partner needs to, to find a job and, and, and to actually increase the labor supply. So, and that's, a, especially if you think about search frictions, and I think search friction will apply to a lot of these people, especially for the lower educated people. So it, it, it might be that, that um, in that setting that the results found are actually an, an, an underestimate of, of the actual effects. So I can imagine with longer, longer, longer time between the panel and, and really exploiting the panel dimension with, with uh, more time that, that you probably will find even higher effects than, than what you find. Um, suppose you also have a, a longer panel in terms of, of numbers of observations per house, so then you could even do kind of a event study in the sense that, um, so, you, you start in a given situation with given labor supply of both partners. Then there's an economic crisis. The, some, some households may be uh, developing a fear of losing a job. They might already interact. And then in later panel, uh, in later observations, you, you will see whether or not the, the risk occurred and, um, and whether there's an additional effect then when that partner effectively loses the job. But once again, this is beyond your control. You cannot do that with, with the data you have at hand. Uh, another um, possible criticism is that the added worker effect is one of the many smoothing mechanisms that are around. I mean, when there's a fear of a job loss or a job plus, people might start uh, using their savings. Um, or there's also uh, government transfers, for example, via unemployment benefits. Um, also, the the fact that taxation is, income taxation is progressive, so that you have a, a concave uh, tax schedule, this basically also implies a smoothing mechanism because the, the, the consumption and the, the income is, does not behave linearly. Um, so, so this paper only focuses on, on one type of, of consumption smoothing. So, but the problem or one potential issue is that there might be the other smoothing mechanisms going on and which confound actually the the, the, the results that, that they obtain. Um, another thing which, which might be interesting and which is a bit related to these consumption smoothing mechanisms is that you're in a very rich policy environment. So you have uh, 16 different countries, 
All these countries have different taxation systems, social security systems. Um, so I wonder whether you could, for example, yeah, try to exploit a bit this policy variation. Um, so for example, the, in many countries, there are generous early retirement uh, possibilities. Um, there's disability schemes that are also used sometimes in, in terms of crisis, whether or not the individuals are really disabled or not. Um, the duration and replacement rate of unemployment differs across all these 16 countries. So I think this is something that, that could be exploited, especially once again, you have, have 3.6 million of observations. So really hundreds of observations per country. So this is really a cool environment. Um, another potential criticism is, to me, it's not always clear which model you have in mind. Basically what, what you do is a, estimate a reduced form uh, model with a lot, a whole bunch of explanatory variables. But when you have, think about structural models, structural labor supply models, not all these variables are necessarily compatible with each other. Um, so I think it would help to, to interpret the, the model's results more when, when you have a, a clear structural model in mind. Um, at the same time, I, I, I fully agree, a, a fully fledged dynamic model, which which would be ideal, I think, in such, in such a setting. So a dynamic model, labor supply model, and savings included, and, and all kinds of other smoothing mechanisms that are allowed. Of course, this is not possible with, it, with only two, two uh, consecutive observations. Uh, but still, maybe a first step can already be done by, for example, trying to estimate a, a relatively standard discrete choice labor supply model. Because at the same time, they, they this would allow you to also model at the same time, simultaneously, the, the extensive and the intensive margin. So now you split your data in several parts and look at, at these margins independently of each other. But of course, in, in what they are also related to each other. I mean, uh, so in that sense, I, I think the, the, the paper might benefit by trying to, to exploit it simultaneously. Um, Another thing that, that, that was striking in your data, and you um, mentioned it also in the presentation, is that the, this, uh, we are indirect evidence of assortative mating. I mean, of course, direct evidence in terms of education level, but in one of your tables, I, I take table one, uh, you also see that if one partner is unemployed, the probability that the other partner is also unemployed is very high, uh, or relatively high. So in that sense, it also shows assortative mating in terms of yeah, skills, earnings, uh, capacity, et cetera. So I think a, a structural model would also allow you to, to analyze this a bit further. Um, of course, one potential caveat, and to me it's not clear it's in the data, but to estimate such a structural model, you need labor um, earnings information, wage rates, let's say, and I'm not sure you, you have this, so maybe this is just an empty comment and then you can just uh, get rid of it. Um, then maybe a technical comment. So in many of the estimations, you, you re-estimate the model for subsamples. Um, so for example, crisis periods versus non-crisis periods, uh, extensive versus intensive margin, also sometimes depending on, on household characteristics, so lowly educated, highly educated. I think a more efficient way would, would be to, to keep all the observations together and work with interaction terms. Um, so, well, usually the main command is it's much more efficient. At the same time, you have so many degrees of freedom that it's again a, a relatively empty command. But uh, I think in principle, it's more efficient given that you have some variables that appear in all the equations. Uh, but then and secondly, it also allows you to, to interpret the results in, in an easier way and to conduct statistical inf inference uh, in, a, in a much more easy way. So I think uh, that's my last slide. Once again, it's a very nice paper. It has a lot of potential and it gave some result that I did not know before. Thank you.